Today, I am talking about hypernova and what could be better than a supernova hypernova. You think supernovas are big, you think supernovas are powerful, you think they're bright. You're, you're right, but there's something even better. And we had to come up with a new name for it. We called them hypernova. They are 10 to 100 times brighter than a supernova. They are incredibly rare. We only see a few of them every year. And so far, we don't exactly know what's going on to make a hypernova. I mean, it's kind of hard. We don't have a lot of observations. We don't understand what we're seeing. Nothing seems to make sense. Even the jargon is all over the map. Sometimes they're called hypernova. Sometimes they're called super luminous supernova, but who says that? Sometimes they're given subclassifications as regular supernova. It's not settled. I prefer to call them hypernova because hypernova. I mean, why would you pick anything else? Anyway, we do have some models for how hypernova can go off. And here's one of them. Here's one of them. We call it, are you ready for this? We call it the collapsar model. Do you get the sense that we're just, physicists and astronomers are just making things up? Like just, okay, what causes a hypernova? I don't know, maybe a collapsar. Who says these kinds of things? Scientists do. Anyway, okay, so here, here's a collapsar model. This is a potential way to trigger an explosion that is 10 to 100 times more powerful than a supernova. It starts off with a very massive star, something like 40 times the mass of the sun, at least. Now keep in mind, a typical supernova requires a star at least eight times more massive than the sun, so we're talking five times bigger than the threshold needed for supernova. You need all this mass, you need all this energy so that you can make a big boom. In the core of a massive star, especially a giant star like this, towards the end stage of its life, it is fusing heavy elements. It's, it's fusing silicon and magnesium in its core until it hits iron. And once it starts fusing iron in the core, you end up with a core of iron. Fusion continues. Iron fuses into even heavier elements, but instead of releasing energy and powering the star, it sucks up energy. And so there's nothing there's no energy output to counteract gravitational collapse. You have this massive star that is crushing down. And then once you hit iron, there's no energy release to push it all back. So the whole thing goes haywire fast. I've done other episodes on exactly how a supernova detonation works. And the very, so you can watch those for more details, but the critical phase here is that when that iron ball gets squished down due to the immense gravity, it turns into a proto-neutron star. It turns into a giant ball of neutrons. That neutron ball can resist further gravitational collapse. The atmosphere of the star bounces off that, and you get the supernova. That's a typical supernova. But what happens if that gravitational collapse is so intense so crushing that even that ball of neutrons can't withstand it, and it crush, crushes down. What we believe happens there is the formation of a black hole, because there's no other force left to stop all that gravity from crashing in. This black hole, once it forms in the center of a star, is a monster. It's already several times more massive than the sun. It's already a point of infinite density as an event horizon. Boom. Once you make a black hole, it's a black hole. You're just done. So imagine the setup here of a newly formed black hole. There is 40 suns worth of material crushing in a giant massive star trying to collapse. Part of it bounces off a little bit, so there's a lot of chaos and shockwaves happening in the center, and then the very core, there's a newly formed black hole, and then you have the rest of the material falling in. 
When you have gas falling into a tight little region, you form an accretion disk. These accretion disks are spinning around super fast. They generate tremendous electric and magnetic fields. These electric ma and magnetic fields can funnel some gas. Most of the gas falls into the black hole and just exits the universe. But some gas gets saved, it gets funneled by the electric magnetic fields, it gets wound around the black hole and then shot out into jets. This is a very common astrophysical scenario. We see jets around, anytime you have material falling onto a small thing, you get accretionists, you get jets. This is that times 11 billion, because you have a black hole and you have 40 suns worth of material crushing in. The jets race away from that newly formed black hole and they just blast through the star. Like they, they just punch a hole in that star. And if we happen to be looking down the barrel of this scenario, if that jet that comes blasting out of the star is pointed in our direction, we see a hypernova. Maybe. This is a pretty cool model. This collapse arm model is pretty cool. It explains some of our observations uh, but not all of them. And so next week, I'll talk about another way you can make a star explode in spectacular hypernova fashion. Thanks so much for your support. Go to patreon.com slash PM Sutter. It really does keep all these shows going. And uh, like, share, subscribe, do all the usual YouTube stuff, and I'll see you next week.